Welcome back to RGV History Revisited. I'm Marlene Rodriguez. For those of you just tuning in, we looked at a bridge that took years to be found, and then we looked at veterans who fought in the War of 1812, and then we looked at an old piece of land that is so important to the history of South Texas, and now we're going to look at a train robbery that had something to do with World War I. Let's take a look. Right now, this particular spot is tranquil to a degree, but it was anything but tranquil in 1915. And then all of a sudden, the, the rails parted and the train crashed. Now, that wasn't just because of a fluke. It was a robbery. There were Mexican revolutionaries that were hiding in the bushes here, and they had pulled out the actual uh, spikes from the rail and, and then pulled it across and caused it to, uh, to crash. Now, once the train had crashed, they were under orders by their political allies that were linked with the German uh, Republic prior to the World War I. And so they raided the train, they were given instructions not to kill any of the Germans, but they unfortunately did kill some of the passengers. This particular incident right here was one of three major incidents that linked Germany with Mexico during the time of the First World War. Why were they involved in the war? It was simple. Germany wanted the United States to get involved here on the border to keep them out of Europe uh, in, the, in the fighting against the Germans. So that was the plan, and it unfolded right here. Once the, the train engine fell on over into the ravine, which is the short way over here, where we are right now is where the railroad trestle was, and that was burnt shortly afterwards because the bandits did not want reinforcements to come and join them and, and be against them. But once the train was over on its side, the bandits appeared, and the engineer was killed in the crash. Uh, Private Stubblefield, in particular, was shot, and I think that there were like three other passengers that were shot. Morris Edelstein, who was the father of the Edelstein's Furniture Company that was here for years and years and years and years, was on that train. But he spoke in Yiddish and German. So the bandits were under instructions not to harm the Germans. And he saved the life of his friend because his friend was a sample salesman. He wasn't a German, but Morris Edelstein told the bandits and said, that's a German, don't, don't, don't harm him. And so his life was saved. The trestle, there was a wooden trestle bridge at that time, was right where we're standing. The train was allowed to pass a short distance, about uh, 300 feet further than where we are, and that's where the division of the rails happened and the train fell over into the tracks. Uh, there, are, there are photographs of that, the, the train lying on its side. The bandits at that point in time set fire to the bridge, to the trestle bridge, and Robert Runyon, the photographer of our area, captured that and, and, uh, and saw that it was on fire. Uh, in order to avoid the uh, troops coming in and, and trying to get to, at, the, at the bandits. This particular scene right here was one of three scenes that positively linked Germany as the culprit uh, with Mexico uh, in the beginnings of World War I. So Brownsville was on the world stage when it came down to this incident. They were forever being watched by the world and saying, why, why is this happening? Uh, why are the Germans interested in, in what's going on here? And then there was another plan up the valley, it's called the Plan de San Diego, that was equally another firm example that the Germans were interested in getting uh, the United States involved or occupied here rather than go over to Europe. The third one, was in Veracruz, and that was the interception of the Zimmerman telegram. That was an absolute decoded message that stated uh, to the German uh, diplomatic corps, to the ambassador, that uh, if you go on the sides with us, uh, if Mexico would go on the sides with Germany, then Germany would uh, give them the spoils of war at the, at the end of the war and give them back California, Arizona, Texas, New Mexico. Once the three incidents had unfolded, the bridge, 
plan de San Diego and their Zimmerman telegram, the United States was poised at war. That was President Wilson having to make the decision. The deciding factor was the sinking of the Lusitania. And that was a United States ship that was sunk by a uh, German torpedo. And that absolutely riveted the United States, and they signed the act of war uh, within a very short time. This is one of those stories that is all but forgotten. If you were to come across this land in the present generation, how would you know that something so impactful in world history happened right here? That's why it's important to tell these stories. Well, there you have it, the final part of RGV History Revisited. I hope you enjoyed these stories as much as I did.